I'm real hot, but that's okay. You're always hot on that mic. I like it though, man. It it, it does good things for me. Mic two is the best mic in this studio. Just so you guys know, I, I took that mic. Mic three is the most consistent. Oh. Either it's going to be consistently good through the whole show, or it's going to be consistently bad. No, that's you. <laughs> 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 Two guys, one podcast, wild, abandoned sexuality of a stallion. There's more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast, cesspool of disease and bacteria. Anything I show you on the internet is fact now. You just walk around using your lips. I have full lips, but I also have a very tiny tongue. Two guys, one podcast, and this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. We've got a crowd tonight. Yeah, also, it's, a, it's a holiday party. Yeah. It's uh, it's America Fuck Yeah Day. Uh, it's July 4th, and we're joined here in the studio. Uh, one guy, the other guy, our mutual friend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's the away crowd there. Uh, uh, testing, testing. One, two, three. Alpha, Alpha, Bravo, two. Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot. Actually gonna have to okay. Get, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna have to get like this. I'm gonna yeah. have to. Do you want to put the little foam thing on it so it doesn't feel like he's? Uh, the foam thing actually doesn't go on that one. You can put that one on it, but I don't know what. You... I just started. So I would uh, not. Does it sound better without the foam thing? Me Talk for a minute. Let me see. Hey, does That's this mic sound man. better without the foam thing? Because it's like a little fuzzy condom, and you know how like sometimes <clears> a condom will 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 <clears> increase your performance. Thing? Yeah. <laughs> Here's what that foam thing does for you, though. That foam thing helps mitigate your pops and your and your and your your juicy like, mouth explosions yeah all your <laughs> <laughs> all your juicy mouth explosions i like that you took the x off of it that's what i appreciate and we're also joined by our holiday friend uh you're kind of like a catholic we only see you on christmas and easter and uh, and, and america fuck yeah day yeah it's a holiday why what are you what are you doing in town for the fourth of july um, I am uh, leaving here tomorrow for a 14-hour drive, so heading to North Carolina for... Oh, we were weeks. a waypoint for you then. Yeah. Well, aren't we lucky? And it just so happened to be a holiday, so that's why, really Excellent. why I drove by. It's uh, great to be back with you guys. I um, appreciate you having me on the show. Oh, this is going to be Happy 4th so. of July. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going to think you're an inconsiderate prick. Right. <laughs> like we're, they're holiday friends. We're joined by the holidays and doesn't even say thank you. You cut it out so it's just blank <laughs> mic space after you ask me a question. Yeah. That's right. And uh, we locked your wife and children up in a closet, our mutual friend, so that you could be free this evening. Uh, yeah, they got a they got a bowl there. They're fine. <laughs> it's, you know, there's water. There's a puppy pad. <laughs> they'll, it'll handle itself. I really. do like you remember to say kids this time. Like you didn't just kill his baby like you usually do. No, I look, I learned my lesson. Uh, Deuce, my youngest, and I had a little heart to heart. He's three now, and so he's he's willing to own up and tell daddy a little something now and again. And he made it clear that my degradation of the youngest children has to stop at this point. So <laughs> I told you. It also doesn't help that whenever it's nap time at your house, I whisper stuff in his ears. Like I'm, I'm trying to overthrow make him a little your father. Yeah. So he's he's calling you out, Daddy not just as a dad, down. but as a, like as a second son too. Like he's he's saying that you're you're treating him differently or something. Yeah. What's interesting though is I now see a future for him, like as a union boss or something. You know, <laughs> I like it. He's nice. a teamster. He's got the build for it too. He does. Yeah. <laughs> I can see him with a nickname like you know Chicago Slim or something Smoking like that. A big stogie. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And they're like, well, sir, you can't smoke those in areas. Well, I can smoke it where I want to. It is America. God damn it. He's got one thumb under uh. Under his suspenders, suspenders. There we go. It was the it was the action one. That... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was thumbing the air there. I was like, no, I'm just gonna leave him hanging. Let him figure it out. Archaic fucking clothing items he's trying to reference. Nobody wears suspenders anymore. When's the last time you saw suspenders? January first, two thousand and five. <laughs> you know, very specific there date. I'm assuming that was a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. It's been made an the impression way. apparently. There were a couple of like I think that's a silly question to ask. Obviously, people wear suspenders because I see them in the store when I go. So somebody's buying them, or they would make them. Do you see a lot of suspenders in the store? I haven't noticed. A lot <laughs> what store do you see suspenders in? <laughs> Men's warehouse. Oh, well, see, there you go. I, I don't buy a lot of suits. I mean, look at the, look at the three of us. Other than you, does anyone in this room look like a person that goes to Men's Warehouse very much? You're in a class thing, by apparently, yourself. I look like fucking everybody you don't want to be. Because no. a couple episodes, uh, look around the room. Out of out of the rest of us, who looks like, <laughs> who looks like a roughneck? roughneck? <laughs> obviously you. Uh, so obviously I'm a suit wearing roughneck. 
<laughs> well, your management. The, we're none. The rest of us have not arisen. We're we're all still serfs, and you've you've eked up into uh, the feudal society. You're a merchant, <laughs> sir. Yeah, no. A money changer. <laughs> a Jew, is that what you're trying to say? A Jew? Is that, is that your nice way to get your anti-Semitic views on the show? You fucking bastard. You're not even Jewish. I like the Jews. I'm not Mel Gibson. So uh, I had a flat tire that I had to change yesterday. Did you man up and do it or call AAA? I, neither one. It, it occurred to me, though. It occurred to me, though. Here's the deal. So rarely does this come up in my life. Rich people change their tires based on mileage, right? They're like, honey, I've been driving on the tires for, I don't know what the tire is good for, 50,000 miles? hundred thousand I don't know what it is. Anyway, whatever it is, you Apparently. drive them that long, you drive them that long, and they say, oh, I'm going to go in and get some new tires on it. Or they, they're at the service station for a regular checkup, that, you know, tune up whatever it is you do to your car maintenance, and the, the guy says, you know, the tread's real low on those tires, why don't you go ahead and put a, a new pair on? And they say, yeah, sure, do that for me. I, on the other hand... Don't try to upsell me. Tires. Change the oil, God damn it. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, in my life, I drive until the tire explodes. That's safe. And then I'm stranded somewhere in, an, in a, probably an unlevel area where I have to jack it up with these archaic tools, put a donut of a tire in its place, and then drive it to a place where I pay a man a significant amount of money to take it off again undo all the work that I just did with really good tools so that he does it in like five minutes. I pay him a hundred dollars. He puts a new tire on. It's a shitty, shitty thing that normal people have Why to do. Rich just, people can go. They don't have to worry with. There's no hurry. If you have a full size spare, it's not like, Oh, I got 15 miles to get this thing changed. It depends on how bad your other tires are. Doesn't it? My other tires do may be very bad. you rotate them? Or you don't? You no, don't I don't them. rotate my tires. Point is every this. Every time he drives. <laughs> yeah, every time I drive, I rotate right down the road. That's the way they're built, right? Yesterday morning, I woke up, I, I put the kids in the car, I got them to school, and I noticed as I'm getting back out to the car, there's, there's metal showing on the tire. But I had the opportunity at that point, I drove it straight to the place where you change the tires, to the service station or whatever. I paid the man. He took the bad tire that's imminently about to blow. He took that tire off, put the new tire on. I never had to touch the fucking tires. I skipped the part in the middle where I'm stranded in a bad place doing something with outdated tools. Fuck yeah, America. That's, that's my Independence Day, sir. Independence from changing tires. I hope we cut this entire story. It didn't end very well. All right, then. <laughs> You were telling me the other day, you're the kind of guy that also rides the tire until it explodes, but that's mostly because you like to change the tire. No, I don't like to change the tire. I just, not knowingly. I don't knowingly like to change the tire. But uh, <laughs> closes his eyes the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm doing this shit right. No, it's just I, like, in the, in the situations where I've looked down at my tire and seen metal, like I haven't, like obviously if I've gotten to that point, like I, I can't do anything about it right now. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> see, I never see metal. It's always a surprise to me when I get a flat tire. Every time. You've never preemptively said, hey, I'm, my tires are very low. I should get a new tire. I assume that's what people with money did. You have money. No, like whenever I take it in to get serviced, yeah, they'll say, hey, you need to get a tire. It's time to rotate or whatever. I'm just like, all right, whatever. So, whenever, tell- so whenever I get a flat, um, it's, oh, okay. it's never expected. Like nobody like wakes up in the morning and they're like, you know, I bet I got a flat. Well, the one like, guy what did. Kind of because he saw, did. Yeah, the one guy did. Like he's I like, did. oh, I got about another eight miles. I'm seeing metal. I need to go get it changed. See, I drive oh, a lot, so I only change them when uh, you know it's raining and <laughs> I just spin out at the stop sign in front of the cop. That's that's generally. When but did I, he give you a ticket for it? No, he laughed. Don't change those tires. <laughs> <laughs> those tires got you out of a ticket. Yeah, yeah. those are good tires. Yeah, those are humorous tires. I might I might trade my tires for those. Something I do want to talk about, since we do have the voice of our mutual friend in the studio with us. Uh, we don't a, just have a, his, a, his voice. It's not his a whole body. Yeah, he's all, <laughs> all of him is he's here. He's not calling in. Yeah, so here's the deal. Last episode, we got a listener email from our mutual friend that berated me pretty handily. <laughs> I'm not going to deny didn't deserve it. Like, I, yeah, maybe. But we have since then talked face to face, and I think I've got him turned around on the whole tar balls things. I, I think I've got him seeing the right way now. I would just like to point out that there was an ultimatum and a declaration made last week that we were done talking about masturbation, Dutch rudders, tar balls, et cetera, et cetera. You took it back to the no, gutter, sir. Masturbation, I'm just masturbation, no, masturbation 
and Dutch doors and stuff, but tar balls that hasn't. Ah, uh, you haven't yet. closed the door on tar balls yet. Yeah, no, 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 uh, no. I see. If we can take time to prove how wrong I am on stuff, <laughs> whenever it comes back to light, that there's a retraction on it. Damn it, I want it heard. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, you've got a witness here in 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 the uh, studio. Our mutual friend. You're brought over to the dark side on this. You think that that tarballing is a thing that may indeed go on in our society? I could see how it could happen, you know, <laughs> with a certain kind of tar. You know, like obviously hot roof and tar is totally out the window. Pine that's tar. Not, that's not However. possible. Pine tar. I think. I think it could happen. Um, I think that there would be some pretty serious ramifications from the tar baller. I mean, tar tar and feathering has been a real thing yeah. forever. Which actually, I, I actually am such a dork. I looked this up the other day after the whole tar balls thing, and that's what they used to use. They used pine tar because that's how they would seal their wooden cabins and stuff. Like really, that's how they would waterproof them. So that's what when you hear about tar and feather, they're actually talking about pine tar, huh? Or some kind of some other kind of tar similar to that, which is liquid at room temperature. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be boiling hot necessarily. They could have it has been hot. They've been using it, and they bring it back in, smack it on your balls. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could, I could see how it could happen. And you know, after we talked about it for me, I no longer doubt that this ever happened to you. At first, I thought you were just making that up. Yeah. See, I mean, here we go. I'm gonna need to see photos truthfully before I believe it. You're I don't think need it to happened. See some actual tar balls to believe it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think we could make that happen. <laughs> got the pine tar in the car. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now nah, you know what? I I'll just make sure I never shower in the same <laughs> building as any of you, and that way I'll just stay out of that issue altogether. Uh, fair enough. You what? You one one for the for the other guy there. One for the Gipper. It is uh, the Fourth of July. Uh, which is why we're all getting together. It's a holiday day. Uh, I, I did some some pooling today. Did you guys do any holiday type activities? Hot dogs and hamburgers and whatnot. We watched uh, slow pitch softball. Nice, <laughs> but America it was the border Canada. battle. Exactly, Who won? America versus Canada. Oh, Canada was smoking us yeah. when we left, like <laughs> nine to four. It wasn't pretty. Really? Seriously? Yeah. Canada, come on now. Canada plays softball better than we do. It's slow slow pitch day. softball. Yeah, slow pitch softball. Slow. Pi- oh, it was slow pitch. Oh, yeah. oh that's yeah. awesome. Can Wait, we, we have teams for that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah well, there's an American <laughs> slow pitch softball team. There really is. Wow, is, was this like Olympic trials? Please tell me this is an Olympic sport. No, I don't think I don't think the Olympic it's sport. It's probably exhibition. It was. The, it's the border battle. So I mean, it doesn't yeah, get more, oh, more legit God. than that. How much beer was consumed at that event? I bet a lot. Where does oh, this take place? It was in uh, it was in Oklahoma, Tulsa Omaha? maybe. No, Omaha's a college World Series. Since, Since it's a border battle, probably Minnesota. Yeah, Montana. They don't have to play on the border. I bet they got a lot of slow pitch softball players in Minnesota. That just seems like a real like. You only real, play hockey ten like months out of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it the other two slow pitch softball. It, it thaws out for two months, and they play slow pitch softball. <laughs> and you know, there's some there's some people who aren't any good at hockey, but they're real good at slow pitch. They you know, live for so they June, live for July. Those two months. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's the summer. That's, My time has come. That's why they won. They wanted it more, <laughs> right? That's why the Canadians won. They only get like a week to play every year. So. Fucking Canucks. <laughs> Is this a portend of, of, of bad things? I, I don't I haven't followed any of are you guys into the Olympics? Does it does it look good for us this year? Do we have a lot of hopefuls? Olympics always look good for the US. <laughs> the <laughs> summer Olympics to Cambodia we, and Jamaica, we, I think, yes. If yeah. we're not in the top three in medal winnings, then yeah, something went wrong. Yeah. We we always like we're always good at all this stuff, but like the summer Olympics in particular because one, we got really, really good track and field people. Did They're you not just say a lot of black guys? No, but I was also gonna say <laughs> We got great swimmers, which hardly any black people swim. So we just got a lot of good. <laughs> you athletes. just made it even more racist. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true though. I mean, those are all. It's racist to make an observation about the quantity of a race that participates in, a, in an event. It's a true level. story. Yeah. There's not a lot of black hockey players either. That's uh, it's just the case. So back to uh, the Olympic sports. Yeah, we've got uh, Lolo Jones made it back. Woohoo! Don't know who Lolo Jones is, right? No. Hurdler. Yeah, hurdler from LSU. I think the oh, crickets nice. that that happened after yeah. you said Lolo. She's a, she's a hurdler from LSU. Awesome. Uh, she made the virgin the last... hurdler. From... Yeah. That's oh Olympics. wait, the virgin. If you led with the virgin, I would have known who you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am the lowest common denominator. What do you want? <laughs> Very pretty girl. I've, yeah. not, I've not even I've not even heard of this person. Really? Yeah. I don't. Right. I haven't really What's... had a chance to get up on the Olympic stuff like recently. What's funny is my wife because I I pay attention to all of it like I watch. You know, I watch the worlds. I watch all of it. Right. My wife thought it was odd, but then she was like, "Oh, never mind. You are you are a runner, so I guess you'd follow a sport that you did." But yeah, so in the in the last Olympics, uh, she was winning her race, man, and hit like the second to last hurdle, came in dead last, made it across the finish line, and then just broke down. Like it was heart wrenching. Mm. So hopefully this time she'll uh, 
Do better than the worst thing possible. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Do do better than the worst thing possible. Yeah, yeah. And in the swimmer, we got swimming locked up. Uh, I'm Phelps is back in this year. Phelps is back in, and he's looking at doing like what ten events? Seven, seven events. Yeah, I thought they said. I thought I already had a a possibility to win ten. That was a couple weeks ago, though. So no, he was going to do the most he's ever entered uh, was eight. Last Olympics, he won eight gold medals. Right. This one, he cut out the 200 meter freestyle. Uh, so he's only doing seven events this year. Oh, I heard he Four of them are individual, are five of them are individual, and two of them are relays. Are four individual and three relays. I think it's I think it's amazing though the opportunity that he has in particular to like set the bar so far out for individual gold medals for an American at least. It probably I mean it won't be accomplished in our lifetimes. Probably he's got fifteen or sixteen. Wow. I see. 15, I was thinking he only 15. had like twelve or thirteen, but he's he's already got the most oh, by yeah. like three or four. And the fact that he could add, not easily, obviously, but it's very reasonable to think that he wins half of what he enters. Let's say he wins. Let's say he wins gold in four. I mean, that's putting the mark way the hell up on the wall. You know, the that's, greatest that's, Olympian ever. Yeah, and this is not. Yeah, his, this isn't going to be his last Olympics either. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is his last you, one. This will be his so? third. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is third. Yeah, yeah I was thinking of the second one. So twelve years. I mean, he's gonna. He's he's already out of his prime, really. How old is he now? He's 26, 25, 26, 27, yeah. something like that. You know, what? Yeah. I could see him missing the next one, but maybe make a comeback to do like a race or two in the third, uh, like the female swimmer, like at thirty five or something. Yeah, like 40 yeah. Year old. Torres was like forty years old and yeah. uh, and made the last one. So. I, maybe, especially if there's if there's another Olympian that that gets like. Eight or nine golds on their on their belt, and and, and yeah. in the next Olympics they've got a chance to maybe get up there to thirteen or fourteen. He James and he's like, Cameron's ah. them and re-releases <laughs> yeah. the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's <laughs> like, uh, we're bringing it back around for a victory lap. Thanks. Oh, this is yeah. what I hope happens, man. I hope he wins all seven. Right? Nobody's ever going to come next to him. But then he, in the next four years, like some really dark shit happens to him. Like he gets hooked on meth or ever goes AWOL for a while, so blows through all of his money on strippers and beer. Right. Maybe maybe starts making anti-Semitic gets, yeah, rants. Gets, yeah, exactly. Gets put in all the tabloids. Uh, people are just dogging him. Everybody hates him. It's worse than Tiger Woods now. Right. Uh, and then he, you know, tries to rocky it, you know, and do his little comeback thing like that. I'm willing to see. Getting so I'd, I'd much rather see Phelps be like a Bobby Fischer, where like he misses, he just disappears. Like he disappears off the face of the planet, skips like three Olympics, and then comes back older than anybody ever has, and wins them all again, and then you never hear from him again ever. He was, you're like maybe he was uh, Aquaman. Maybe we just yeah. <laughs> didn't understand. Or like may, maybe like the 30 years you haven't heard from him, he's like been studying swimming on some mountaintop in Tibet or something. Because that's you what he studies swimming a fucking mountaintop. <laughs> but you know, you he's, he's on some kind of like he's on yeah. some realizing kind of like the spiritual journey. Of water. That, that's actually the <laughs> yeah. first step. There is no water. Well, exactly. if you think about it, where he's swimming, there is no water. That's true. It's like it's all about displacement of the liquid, right? I mean, it's a, that's a very zen a, way to look at the dude, thing. That's a reach. No, no, I think that's absolutely true. There's I'm, wherever he is, there is no water. That's right. That's right. That's see, this is why I bring him into the studio. Here. Well, there's all, there's the water he brought with him. I mean, he's yeah. he's seventy five. Seventy five. There's twenty five percent less water than yeah. there was. <laughs> so 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 actually, wherever he is is where the water always is. <laughs> You guys, neither one of you uh, chimed in on the uh, questions that we had in the last couple of podcasts. Worst movie you've ever seen? Our mutual friend. Mm. Mm. Uh, We talked about some pretty terrible ones. Troll, the House series, uh, He of the Very Long Name, uh, which you have suggested a name change. He of Many Names. I like he of many names. Yeah, that was, it rolls. It's off very the children of the better. Cornish. He who walks yeah. behind the rose. I like oh, that one. He like of many that. names. Yeah. yeah, I like that one. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You are officially rebranded, sir. Uh, he of many names suggested a film called Hell of the Living Dead. Yeah, and I really liked his. I've never, I've never seen it, but after hearing his description and you guys talking about it, I'm gonna have to. Uh, there's a YouTube link right now on our Tumblr page, which you can find at two guys one pod dot tumblr dot com. Uh, you can find the YouTube link, the IMDb link, and and some other fun stuff there. Two guys one pod dot tumblr dot com. Yeah. What's the worst movie you've ever sat through? The whole thing. I got well. First of all, let me just say I absolutely disagree with you on Magnolia. Okay, absolutely disagree with you. Hey, on it's Magnolia. America. Everybody has the but right to be wrong. I will also say this: that maybe the worst movie I've ever seen is called Shortcuts, right? And it's basically Magnolia 
that was made 20 years earlier. Okay, I think Magnolia is a great film. I think that Shortcuts is the biggest waste of four hours that anybody could ever go through in their entire life. It's a Magnolia type ensemble film that's four hours yeah, long. Yeah, it's like it's 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 slice of life kind of thing where like you, all these different characters start out in different situations and and you know in some of those things they all are unified by like they come together and somehow they're unified. Well, like by in Magnolia, it's about the game show. Every right. everyone exactly. surrounds the game. But in show. Shortcuts, they remain completely separate until the end. They're all unified by a an unexplained event, right? Like in Magnolia, like the frog raining thing. Yeah, except for the like the the conclusions that you come to during and after that event for Magnolia are meaningful as it goes to those characters, but they're also meaningful for you as a viewer. In Shortcuts, they're absolutely meaningless in every way. <laughs> it's a very terrible movie. I don't know that that's the worst one I've ever seen. Who's who's in it? Oh man, it's one nobody of those, you would know. No, it's got a lot of stars actually. Um, it was one of those where, like, everybody in Hollywood that was hot at the time did it. Uh, Fred, nice. Fred Ward was in it. I mean, not that he was the hottest guy in Hollywood. <laughs> I, like, <but laughs> I like, though, I like though that you're like, everybody in Hollywood was in it. Well, Price, it Fred Ward was in it. <laughs> well, obviously. No, but, you know, I remember that one because I always use, I always use that movie uh, as a uh, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon link. Ah, if you nice. can get Fred Ward, then you got <laughs> you know, at least one other person. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, if you, can, if you can, like, Fred Ward's been a lot of stuff, so if you can link a movie to Fred Ward, then Kevin Bacon was, was in Fred Ward with Tremors, so that's always. I probably overthink that game a little. Uh, Fred, so, so Fred Ward is the is the other roughneck with Kevin Bacon and Trimmers. Yeah, yeah, he's the. Oh, he's I the, love that guy. I didn't know what his yeah, name that's was. Just, yeah, he's in the right stuff too, which is also a good one. But um, worst movie I've ever seen. I, there was a movie a few years back uh, called Supernova, that was just extremely terrible. Supernova. I remember. Was it a? It's a disaster film. No, it's a sci-fi it's a sci-fi film. Yeah, it was. They just. It was just bad. It, it wasn't even like bad in ways. It's fun to talk about. It's just a stupid movie that was done really poorly. And that, I don't know what that was. It was distracting, though. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. See, I really like We're the House series. We're talking about terrible movies. See, see I thank you. I like the House I, series, too. I really too. like the House series. I did. I All it was of really them? Good. Oh, you mean like with Kid and Play and those guys? No, 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 no not House Party. It's House Party. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, right, right. <laughs> Those were also really good. The, the house party movies, I didn't know this until literally like six months ago. It was supposed to be Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Uh, they would have been much better. Although, I'm, I mean, house party was awesome. You like I'm, the leg shake. Yes, absolutely. I mean, and the, the jumping over the leg with the other leg, that's oh, yeah. pretty awesome too. Kid and Play exist in pop culture only because of the house party films. Let's be honest. I mean, they never would have made it as rappers outside of the house party films. Will Smith passing on a project created a career for those two young men <laughs> yeah will smith is a pretty major yeah, that's how big will one smith of them's is. a comedian now which is it kid or play is uh, it the high top the or the, the hair. one with the normal hair i think it's the one with the hair yeah the one with the, the high top does he still got it he's still doing the hair thing i don't i had an opportunity to go see him for free and chose not to take that opportunity hmm. i think that says more about kid or play than it does about yeah. you. well when you're talking worst movies like i think anytime you get up into the eights of something like Police Academy 8, Police Academy yeah. 9. Yeah. Those have got to rank up there with the those, no, most what? horrible those movies. Get up there. There, you cannot uh, make a bad Police Academy movie. You can't. Without Steve Gutenberg, you can. <laughs> he was really the glue yeah. that held no. us together. Oddly, oddly. Got to have the glue. Like if, <laughs> yeah. Airplane, yeah. If, that one. if Airplane 3 came out, I would watch it. Yeah, absolutely. And enjoy it. Well, only if I had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> <laughs> no other cast member back. Yeah, just him. <laughs> on an airplane with snakes. <laughs> That's a mashup of franchises I'd, I'd pay to see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that definitely. would be awesome. Uh, Green Lantern. Green Lantern. The new one? The new one. That, that, was, that was pretty god-awful. Really? Oh, it was terrible. Oh, that's a shame. He it was a laugh out loud guess. bad. Uh, All right. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet, so I mean, I guess I got to put that down there with Jonah Hex on the Super Yeah, I was watching Jonah Hex the other day. I don't think that's that bad. Really? You just got it's one of those I mean I didn't see the whole thing, but I saw like So then it doesn't count now, does it? Well maybe it then doesn't. Then why are you wasting our airtime? If you don't want me to talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about, then don't invite me in here. That's right, nobody's hiring it out. <laughs> Barking commands like you paying for the studio. Anyway, like I was saying <laughs> Like I, I saw it from like uh, like the middle to the to to the end, right? You know, where all the good stuff in a movie like that's going to happen, and it, you know, you just got to kind of go into it with an expectation that you're going to see something that doesn't make sense, and then it's fun. You know what I mean? I think there's Fair a lot enough. of things like that. What about Ghoulies? You all ever you talk I about love Ghoulies? ghoulies. I, and Critters, I rank them up there the same. Loved really? Critters. I was yeah, a Critters yeah. guy more than a Ghoulies guy. Never saw Ghoulies Critters though. I don't made me so scared of toilets for yeah that's like not a good that's not twenty five years either. now I'll say this <laughs> Ghoulies the original Ghoulies ranks very high on the top 
list of best VHS covers ever. Oh, that yeah. the image of the, of the ghoulie, the ghoulie yeah, the one of, ghoulie, he's his arm like open. he's holding the lid, uh, the holding the lid of the toilet seat up or whatever uh, as he climbs out of the toilet. That was yeah, it was terrifying yeah. as a child. Yeah, I never even saw the movie, and I still like I was still would would come up on my toilet and like kind of look at it sideways and be like, what's in there? It was Nothing. the movie that did for toilets what Jaws did for the ocean. You know Jaws did do? that for toilets for me. Jaws did that for every body of water. I wouldn't be, we had an above ground swimming pool. It did it for showering. Pool. Oh, it did it, yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, I didn't like to go in the I shower I try not to it. close my eyes whenever I'm I'm rinsing my hair off because I'm scared he's going to come through the uh, through the drain and I always get soap in my eyes. I'm such a pussy. <laughs> yeah, dude, but you'll float down there. Yeah, yeah, they all float. <laughs> You know they're making a remake of that, right? By the way, I thought that was a pretty good Pennywise. That was a pretty good Pennywise, actually. Yeah, they're they're remaking it as a. Uh, it's going to be two films. Two, yeah, either two movies or it's not HBO, right? Like they're not no, doing I think it like it's a mini live action two movie film. Man, I really hope I really hope they keep keep uh, Tim Curry as uh, Pennywise, though. I love that guy. Yeah, I'm fine with him, and I think he. I mean, he's not too old to do it or anything. Crispin Glover. That guy's equally creepy. Yeah, but he's creepy in a different way. Like, Tim Curry's really outwardly, like, he kind of exudes creepiness. What, Dillis? Tim Curry played Satan. Yeah, and he see, played yeah, Darkness. I mean, no, he was, he was, it but, was you know, terrifying. Crispin, Crispin Glover. Until he turned into the giant spider thing that did And Cardinal Richelieu. But when was he Cardinal Richelieu? And Three Musketeers. Musketeers. No, no, the new the, one? The uh, uh, Man in the Iron Mask. Was it Man in the Iron Mask? Yeah. No, I thought it was the Disney, uh, Disney Three Musketeers. I'm going to defer on this one. What was that Charlie Sheen and Oliver Platt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that's the fact that okay, they cast Charlie back, Sheen as a musketeer. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that's a really good movie, actually. That one holds up really well. Oliver Platt, by the way, yeah. I always would pay to see. The, fast, the fact that they cast Oliver Platt in Oliver Reed's role, I cannot watch him. Because Oliver Reed, you know, from the original Three Musketeers. Uh, I don't guess with, I've ever seen with, it. With uh, uh, Michael York, is that the guy's name? And Oliver, you never seen it? Oh, maybe it's, oh, it's the Four Musketeers is what it's called, actually. Oh, yeah. Whatever you call them, they all feature four. Like it's all about right. the introduction D'Artagnan. of D'Artagnan. Yeah. yeah, but how about how often that story has been retold in our culture? Right? It's really popular. It's like every few years. It's probably. It, I bet it's one of the most recycled books to ever been made in a film. I'm I'm going to say the Bible. Yeah, they made a lot of Bible films. Yeah, they made a lot of Bible films, but they've been making up since you know since talkies. You know what I mean? And to be fair, the Bible has a lot of different stories in it. Right, but he said the most the book that's been turn into film the most maybe go i don't know that that's i don't know that that's true it's possible that the book that the bible that that pieces of the bible have been i mean yeah i guess if you counted every biblical story maybe three Mus- three musketeers is high i'm sure um well, count of monte cristo has been redone a lot as well right that's true yeah uh maybe that just has more to do with the fact that they're open source and uh, not open source but like what's the word yeah the domain public domain the public domain books that probably has a lot to do with it yeah, so anybody can go. They don't have to, you don't have to fight over the rights or whatever. So here's an idea since we've been discussing movies is uh let's have some listeners send in some movies and we'll take like 3 of them and we'll have a movie night. We'll watch them and then the next show we'll discuss those movies and uh tell those people whether they were idiots or not for uh, sending it to us. I'd so be those movies you should watch, movies you shouldn't watch, whatever movie you... they feel like we should watch. And they could be tricking us like I I would send in a fucking horrible movie. So you like you would, the, you would like send the crime in, game. Yeah, like what, send that in. That's a yeah. good movie. You don't well, like the game? It's one of those in the idea of um, just the twist ending, like the right. uh, okay, usual so, suspects and so it's a movie like you that, need, so. you're saying it's a movie you should watch. Oh, yeah, you what should see you, it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, you I could do you could one. do that or you could send in blood sucking freaks. <laughs> Killer condom. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> Killer condor? Condom. Killer condom? A, yeah, it's a I think film. any of I think any of them with a hole in it's killer, really. Uh, sorority babes at the slime bowl ballerama. See, I think you have to exclude trauma films because, yeah, like, exclude films that are. That, made well, the, the sorority bad, babes is right. not a. That's not a trauma film. That's right, just but, classic eighties. Right, but, but that's one of those movies that's made to be bad. Like if you're talking about the, the worst movies ever made, I mean, are you talking about Sergeant Kabuki Man in NYPD? Yeah, <laughs> Sukiyaki discussed... Western Django, for instance. Oh, wait, Sukiyaki I like that. I like Western that Django was not meant to be a bad movie, though. It is a bad movie. I liked it. I think it. Think Did you it, really? I think it's meant to be. I think it's meant to be. Yeah. See, I don't think it's. I think it's meant to be. It's, it's meant, meant, meant to, to be filmed line. in that style. Yeah, yeah. It's meant to be that. It, it is yes. what it's meant to be. I think it was meant to be that, and it failed. At, like, it wasn't a good execution. Like Red Zone of that. Cuba is a movie that was that is like that. That's really terrible, like that. But it was filmed like fifty two or whatever it was on like a hundred dollars. Right. They were making that to be like a crime drama, but it is now like one of those movies that like uh, Mystery Science Theater kills. Right, 
Like they go back and make it funny. You know what right. I'm saying? So, but I think Sukiyaki Western Django and other films like that were filmed in order to avoid having to have somebody make it funny for you. I don't think that movie in particular, it's not very funny. It just didn't succeed. Like, yeah, I get that they're trying to be almost a parody of this thing and they want to yeah. like I, I agree with you digest and then and then and then redisplay all of the eccentricities and cliches it's just it was a shitty stu- is that a nice way of saying they want to vomit stuff yes. on film yes they, they want to digest it yeah. and what you were looking for was regurgitate it yeah at the worst that's what tarantino is when you do what tarantino does and you do it poorly that's what it is. You take a bunch of things and you chew it and then you vomit it at me. Which is it's disturbing that he associated himself with that movie. You know not I mean? just associated. I mean, he was in he it. put his name on it. And he He's put in himself it. in it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, did you say your worst movie, by the way? I missed it. Strung out did. a couple of them. Green Lantern's on up there. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, best post-apocalyptic movie or skip it? Uh, yeah, we talk about. I mean, mine's not going to change. For, Blood of yeah. Heroes is definitely the best post-apocalyptic. Uh, I disagree. I think it's a great one. You know that I love Blood of Heroes. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, I think it's not even close. It's got to be Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I, you you go to Beyond Thunderdome as the best of that series? Oh, it yeah. is. It's it is. definitely the best. Yeah, Beyond, Mad Max question. Beyond Thunderdome is my favorite now, Mad Max. I love the first two. I especially love the first one. The second one is just kind of a lark, but the first one is wonderful. And it took me a while to get to the point where I could appreciate it. But Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, it's not only the third of a, of, a, of a trilogy, but it's totally unlike any of the other two in any way. Like It's more, it's more like the second one than the first one, but it, in its characterizations and like the, the scope of the themes at which it covers, it's so far beyond those first two. It's, an, it's almost an entirely different one-off film with Mad Max on the, on the, in the title. You know what I mean? I, don't you wish they would do that with other franchises? I like do. Do you make a movie about James Bond, but he's not on a case? Like, yeah, <laughs> when he's there's on a lot holiday, of dr- like, there's a lot of drinking and fucking in that one though. Yes, exactly. I'm saying there's 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 or a lot know, of interesting could, things to be made about that dude, other than just when he's killing bad guys. It could be a different type of action movie though. Like say for instance, he and like a friend of his from the service go and get stuck in a cave somewhere. Is it like is it a friend? <laughs> yeah, the secret reveal is well, James maybe Bond's it's, maybe really it's money gay. pinning. Yeah, it's oh, a, yeah. awesome! Yeah. That, uh, Miss Moneypenny, undo that bow and get to know you a wee bit better. Yeah. Or, or, or like you see a movie that's all about Clark Kent, the hardworking journalist. He never once changes <laughs> like, into Superman. Who wants to watch when he, that? When he breaks though. the big story. Yes, exactly. It's, it's like Superman Clark Kent winning a Pulitzer. Yeah, that would be absolutely. That would be an absolute letdown. I no, I think I think that would be a fantastic thing. Mad Max uh, Beyond Thunderdome. What what? It's I haven't seen it since I was a child. I finally went back and watched Mad Max the first one. I have not seen Road Warrior again yet, mm. but I'm I'm working my way through the series. So you're telling me I'm I'm building up to the best one. I'm really excited now. Yeah, yeah it definitely. is. Yeah, like it's awesome. it's on another level entirely. And whether you think that constitutes as the, there's lots of things that you could say make up the best, you know, post apocalyptic movie ever. I think that one is the best because it's it's genre defining. It's got some of the best stars in it. It's got a great story and it's got a kick ass movie poster. It was got a really good song too. Yeah, what, we does. don't need another hero, yeah. dude. That song fucking kicks ass. There's no two dude, ways about it. It's got Tina Turner in it, man. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, but I'll raise you. I'll see your Tina, Tina Turner and raise you Rutger Hauer. That's. I think they're. I think they're on. I think they're on a level. Now, do I think that Tina Turner's as good an actor as Rutger Hauer? No, no, no not even close. But Rutger she, Hauer does not have gams like Tina Turner. Though. That is the. That is a true statement. That is a true statement. But I mean, also Tina Turner as like a chick who was nothing and then became a person who ran a town. Like the only city in the world, basically, I could definitely see that, and she does it well. Yeah. Like basically, she's playing. Uh, uh, oh nothing. yeah, she is the Swearinger of the post-apocalyptic time. Yeah, she plays uh, Swearinger. Nice. Yeah. Well, see, I uh, I think I'm gonna agree with your mutual friend here. He's not your mutual friend. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he excluded I'm, himself. I'm everybody's mutual <laughs> friend. <laughs> Our mutual friend. I didn't want to, you know, include myself in there. There you go. This. But I think there's there's you know different genres you can go with like one of the the all time greatest things in in Death Race two thousand. That's <laughs> that is a fantastic post apocalyptic movie. Yeah, and Sly Stallone's in that, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And I think David Carradine and they get points for running people over. It's 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 brilliance and it's you know badness. Uh, but I, I really think as far as really good post-apocalyptic stuff, I've got to I've got to stick with zombie movies and, and Romero's original and even the remake of Night of the Living Dead, because not only was it post-apocalyptic and this was the, a world that could be, but 
there was also like really interesting, compelling social commentary at the end. So it, it wasn't Especially just the world see, in the future, say, but it was that the, that what the world not, could be. I say that is not what a the world is. apocalyptic movie. You say that it's an apocalyptic. I say it's an apocalyptic yeah. movie. Even if you go into the uh, the the later ones, granted, the first and second one is an apocalyptic movie. But as you get later, and they're trapped in, you know, the mall and Land of the Dead, or or in the other places, there, there's still. Granted, it's never as good as the commentary in the first one, but there's still a, a continuing commentary as you go through Romero's post-apocalyptic as, as most of society is So you're, you're dead. saying that your your favorite post-apocalyptic work of all time is that series? I think it's right on up there. Yeah. Okay. Right on. I'm a big zombie fan. He, he threw me out on the technicality when I tried to use Shaun of the Dead would be my oh, favorite. Oh, don't one. feel bad. I completely don't agree with... Yeah, a, yeah, a you're, you're not counting it. I yeah, no, it. I don't count. Well, everything he just said to but me just saying, bullshit. But he's taking a whole series, not not That's just fine. a film. I don't, I don't consider any, even the series isn't post-apocalyptic to me. His idea was that you had to be far enough out from the inciting incident of the apocalypse, like a new society, a new civilization, right? From has, that event. Oh, it's got to be Waterworld then. Yeah, Waterworld, dude. I love Waterworld. <laughs> you are you and my wife. He badgered me into agreeing to Waterworld too. Waterworld what he is, does. It's 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 way up there, man. Like Waterworld's awesome. It was better than all the crap that it got. And granted, Absolutely. it probably wasn't worth a uh, two hundred, like a hundred and fifty million, million whatever it was. Well, yeah, especially the in the day. Hey, yeah. water's not free, bro. <laughs> it's a books. lot of bottled water. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they used was Dasani. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by Coca Cola. <laughs> so I have a word of the day. Oh, you're late to the game here. We're like thirty minutes in, but I'm down. With the magic of editing, we That's can put right. it anywhere. We can put it anywhere. Good point. <laughs> I'm just saying we have less time now to try it. Right, but it's one that's, I think you'll win this one. It's going to be pretty right. easy. The Urban Dictionary Word of the Day. Like turbate. Liking your own post or comment on Facebook. A like turbate. You just know Bob is going to sit over there and like turbate. I never like turbate. Right, there's going to be more situations for you to, to use, use that it. word than for me to use that word. I say I never liked her bait. Does it count if I reshare a post for this podcast, for instance? You know, that's a Dutch rudder. We already talked about it. <laughs> I'm just working the arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Like nice. her bait. I don't like it. Well, the other option was freedom fondle. What does freedom fondle mean? Freedom fondle is whenever you're going through the airport and you get patted down by TSA. You just got freedom fondled. I like freedom yeah, fondle a lot good. better than like debate. Like, here's the problem with like debate. I don't have. I don't. I want to take the negative connotation off of masturbation. Why? Why? Why do we? Why? Why do we? Why would we say it like it's a bad thing? If they're doing it in public, it's a bad thing. If Everything you're on Facebook's on in table, public. Uh, well, okay. I guess. I, okay. I guess. Would you? Yeah, but I'm saying. So don't attach it. Make it. I don't know what I would suggest as an alternative. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, just don't. Fair just don't do it because it's dumb. And you'll it go blind. <laughs> you you do like, get hairy. You not like hairy your like comment. buttons. <laughs> your, your, your your index finger gets hairy. <laughs> yes. Your mouse finger gets awfully hairy. Your trackpad would cover in a moss. Man, that dude's Wet got a keyboard. That dude's got a real hairy index finger. He must like to bait a lot. <laughs> Motherfucker, does that count as you? You used it in a sentence. Did you just win the game? Ding 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 ding. No, we were still talking. We we're still discussing it. Oh, all right, fair enough. That was not seamlessly in a conversation. Yeah, all right. So, is it going to be freedom fondle or like debate? There are four of us. Let's take a vote. I like uh, freedom fondle because you know yeah. it's got the same connotation from like what we did from uh, French fries to freedom fries. So you, you can assume that it used to be French fondle, <laughs> and then <laughs> no, just, no, no, no. just for the fourth, we've changed it to freedom fondle. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole different fondle entirely. Yeah, I was going to say the, the I, French I fondle. I, See, I'd rather be French fondled than freedom fondled. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't. I'm not exactly sure what French fondled is, but I want to try it. Yeah. yeah, I think French fondled could be a lot of fun. Did you guys hear about the cop? This was in Florida the other day. Uh, this <laughs> cop. I know. Every everything in Florida is going to Florida's hell in a handbasket. Florida's Louisiana, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just moving, just moving east. <laughs> this guy. This this cop pulls up. Uh, there's a car parked in an apartment complex. It's a, a teenage guy and a teenage girl in it. Nineteen year old guy. 15 year old girl talking hanging out like you know teenagers do the guy made the the chick undress he accosted them so what are you doing in there you having sex she says no well i'm gonna i'm gonna need to make sure i'm gonna need you to pull down your sh your skirt and show me took made her made her take her clothes off she's suing him that, that chick's gonna get rich and that cop's gonna have his life she ruined. was wearing and a I skirt though right him. yeah 
classy. No, classy. she wasn't wearing a skirt. You she was wearing put a on your skirt. I, th- I, I want to say the. I'll have a link to the article on our Tumblr page, but I, I want to say the the article said that it was jeans, maybe or something. She had to undo her pants. I think is the way that it was done. But yeah, the dude. This is exactly why people call cops pigs. It's That's one dude. Power. Yeah, one dude abusing your power like that. Uh, it's just ridiculous. That chick's going to get rich. That dude wasn't being a pig. It was being a hog. Pigs get fat. Hogs, hogs get slaughtered. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. <laughs> anyway, boo on him. Why did we go down that? We were talking, oh, freedom fondling. Yeah, that was not freedom fondling. No, he didn't was, fondle her. He just oogled was her. Was that French fondling? No. I think we agreed. French fondling is fun. That's just fuckery is what that is. Well, I think it's fuckery with a cigarette in your mouth. Fuckery with a cigarette yeah, in your mouth. Yeah, it's like a thin mustache. Yeah, a thin mustache. World War II Turkish fondling. <laughs> no, because then it's just hairy. There's mm. a lot of fondling that you can live with. That's not one of them. I want no part of Turkish fondling. It's I don't not, have any problem gentle. with the Turkish people. I just, I don't, I don't want to yeah. fondle. Well, them specifically Turkish World War Two, because you know it's been it's been dramatized in several films, like uh, uh, the Lawrence Olivier. What is that movie? Lawrence of Lawrence Arabia. of Arabia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can I tell you my biggest surprise about that movie when I saw it for the first time? Sure. Lawrence was his last name. You know me too, I think, which is weird. <laughs> Like, how juvenile is that assumption that that's his first name? I was completely... <laughs> I I had a lot of assumptions about that film. Most of them were right. I did enjoy it. It was a good movie. It was way too long, way too slow for me, really, in a lot of ways. But it's, it's worthwhile. Everybody should see it. It's a classic. But, yeah, I was completely taken aback. Like, I think I might have text messaged somebody or called somebody <laughs> about it. Like, hey, did you know Lawrence of Arabia? It's, his last name is Lawrence. Yeah. It's, it's like it's T.H. Not, Lawrence It's or not something. of Arabia. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> so well, did, you think, did you think that Mr. was his first name in the talented Mr. Ripley? No, no. <laughs> no that I just, Mr.'s a son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I thought it was one of those things like his name was, you job, know. Though. Lawrence Gale or whatever and then he goes to Arabia <laughs> and 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 the the people there they began to call him Lawrence of Arabia or or once he ingrained himself in the local populace then the Brits called him Lawrence of Arabia which they did right. but that was his last name I, anyway I don't know why we I was, there's another fucking sidetrack you people got to rein me in here a little bit there's four people I in try here. um so and if you could if you could remake any war movie uh, like they give it to you. You yeah. get to pick the writer. You can write it if you feel like you could. You could direct it if you wanted to, or you could just pick whoever you want. You could fucking cast it how you wanted. You get to be the creative force, and you can remake any war film. Yes. Oh, I like that one. Does it have to be remake or make? Could you go back and, and replace the original with, with being a part of it yourself? Or or make make a war film now? No. Based on, or is it just stuff that's been made already? I think it's just if it's been made already. Okay. Because that way you have something to compare it to and people have a, re- a point of reference. Right. I'll jump in there, and it's just for the joy of making it and because of the, the absolute fun that the movie could be would be Catch-22. I think that's one of the greatest yeah. novels ever written as far as a, a great American work. Uh, not that the original movie was bad, but I think that's definitely a, a story that still is valid and still could be updated. And I think with That'd a modern a great, cast, that would be a, that would a certainly great, be a great movie to make. to work with, definitely. If I could be part of the original, I would have loved... Platoon. No, mm. no, 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 no. I wouldn't do any of the Vietnam films at all. Charlie Sheen, Tarantino, and Oliver Stone all in the same crew. That'd be tough. Yeah, I know. No, but I in all of the Vietnam films, if you go and and look at their making ofs, like none of them were pleasant experiences. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne went crazy. Yeah, well, well Coppola had a heart attack and yeah. lost like sixty pounds. Martin Sheen had a heart attack floating in the middle of a river. He was all by himself in a river when he had a heart attack. Yeah, that's insane. That's man. crazy. Man. And Marlon Brando never was the same person again. Oh, yeah. He had all, he was already a little bit off the deep end, but he never returned to himself. I'm after not saying that. I would, I'm not saying I would want to remake Platoon, but I'd want to be in the movie. Uh, it, it is a great cast because no matter no matter what shit you did after that film, yeah, yeah, you're always remembered. Yeah, all yeah. those people went yeah. on to. Yeah, that, more. that makes you entirely. From Here to Eternity is one of my favorites. It's it's a, it's this weird little film around the beginning of World War II. It's it's set in Pearl Harbor, right? Yeah. You've got Montgomery Clift is in it. Frank Sinatra is in it. It's the one that gave Sinatra back his career. He won the Academy Award, I think, for Best Supporting Actor that year. It's like historically it's got a lot of importance. The production of the thing was a very big deal. The book is very popular and, and a very good book, too. Story is awesome. Yeah, that's that's one historically I'd like to be a part of. And I wouldn't mind seeing it remade, truthfully. It's a really interesting story that's not really about the war, but it's about this time period that you don't think about. The moment before World War II was a thing that Americans mm. really gave a shit about. 
I don't know. It's a really it's an interesting moment caught in time, and I, I'd love to see like a new young actor actor take on the Montgomery Clift role, I, or somebody like a uh, Robert Downey Jr. play the Sinatra role, for instance. You know, yeah, that's like a, that's a good spot. For yeah, man. You get George Clooney to play the um, who's the older actor that was the that was the commanding officer. He's the one that rolls around on the sand and the famous. Uh, image from the trailer or whatever. Yeah. Fuck, I can't think of his name. Anyway, you get like George Clooney to play that guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that could be a hell of a good movie. Well, I think if you put those actors in any movie, it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so, Robert Downey Jr. So whether you do a good job making it or not, yeah. nobody cares. Yeah. I'm going to do a shit job. Let me get all the good actors I can. All right, so you got Platoon. Oh, no, I'm not. Platoon, I would be in. It's not the movie I'd remake. Oh, nice. You know, it's interesting that you said uh, From Here to Eternity, because before you said that, I was actually thinking... You know, it'd be cool to remake Pearl Harbor where it doesn't suck. You know, because that's that's a really important event, and like it's really not covered in our like in our in recent cinema history, except for in Pearl Harbor, which isn't very good. I think what they did in that is like like somebody watched Titanic and they were like, oh, people really like it when you show detailed shots of ships sinking, and so they were really specific about the actual attack, and the attack looks great in that movie. But there's lots of movies where the battle looks fantastic. I think. The fact that they weren't able to put any kind of fucking story together with a bunch of famous people in that movie, a bunch of famous, good-looking people. I would uh, see. I would take Last of the Mohicans. That's yeah, I know, boy, boy I that's you're going yeah. way back there as far as war films. But yeah, that's a that's a really yeah, good. Yeah, you know, bef- I was and I would still cast Daniel Day Lewis though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a little old for it, I think. Now he'd be the father now. Dan Day Lewis could do anything at all. Period. He could do anything. Is, so you're saying if we make the Clark Kent win in a Pulitzer movie, we cast Daniel Day Lewis as Clark Kent? That's the only way it could work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you'd believe it 100. percent That's a true story. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I, a war movie that I would redo is Last of the Mohicans. Such a good movie, man. Yeah, it's really. Sad. I will yeah. find you or Casablanca. So you can't remake Casablanca. People will kill you dead for that. Someone will assassinate you, and you. No, it said, be, it said be if right you could. No, it said if you could. Well, I think so you get the same thing that from I could do for here it, to so. eternity. Yeah, well, yeah, probably not true. to the same extent of Casablanca, yeah. but I think you'd get you'd get but the yeah, same. No, that's not. I realize that's not even part of the question, but I hadn't even considered. Casablanca. Yeah. Who would you cast as Bogart or Rick? Well, Carrot Top. here's <laughs> I, Carrot, Carrot Top. Top. Yeah, no. Do you do a black and white so his hair just looks gray? <laughs> <laughs> I, Brad Pitt, man. <laughs> you cast Brad Pitt as everything. You're yeah. like, I'm remaking Jaws. I want Brad Pitt as the shark. <laughs> 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 Brad Pitt would not be my shark. Who would be your shark? Oh my god, I would love to redo Jaws as a comedy. Like I would have Oliver Platt as Quint. No, 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 no. No, no I'd have Zach Galifianakis as Quint. <laughs> oh man, I like that idea. Yeah, Zach Galifianakis would be Quint. And uh, you get uh, what's his name from The Office, uh, The American Office, Dwight. No, <laughs> Michael Carell. Yeah, no, yeah, Steve Carell. You get yeah. Steve Carell as as the Roy Schneider yeah, character. Yeah. And then the uh, the other guy would be uh, the uh, the teacher, the doctor. What are the sign? What is? Yeah, he? who's going to be Richard Dreyfuss? He's, uh, he's the he's the marine biologist. Right. I'm thinking McBride. Oh, it's got to be somebody. Danny McBride, un- unbelievably awesome. Like, yeah, it's, I don't it's Richard like Danny McBride that much. Well, no, I, I like that guy, but I don't. He can do Dreyfus. Like Dreyfus was for oh, real. It, Bill yeah. Murray then done. Yeah, Bill. You can put Bill Murray. in uh, see, Bill Murray's got to be Quint though. If you're, like he's he's got way too much gravitas to be Richard Dreyfus. No, no, no. I think that that's. I think he lends that to the Richard Dreyfus role though. I think that's what you do. With so him. he's Steve Zizu. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just call in Steve Zizu instead of getting a regular marine well, biologist. Yeah. I, would, I mean, I would I would probably trade a limb to see more of Steve, Steve Zizu. Yeah, I'll I'll go on record too as saying <laughs> I'm personally in for the Kickstarter campaign if uh, Wes Anderson <laughs> wants to make a new Steve Zizu film. <laughs> like he needs a Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, I'm just saying if that's if, if, if I need to chip in, I got five on it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Speaking of, have you guys seen the trailer for Moonrise Kingdom? Yeah. No, Have you that? seen Moonrise Kingdom? It's no. the new Wes Anderson film. Of course, there's nowhere in this godforsaken hellhole of culture that we live in anywhere near us That's that we can see it. it. Yeah, yeah. God you gotta forsaken go, hellhole of culture. Really. You gotta go. Yeah, it says what says four Uganda? theater majors. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing but culture. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It's a different <laughs> yeah. culture. Yeah. I'm not saying they have no culture. You're talking about how this culture doesn't allow you to access new and interesting things from around the country. It's just limited release films, really. Is Anyway, I hear it's good. People who've seen it are freaking out about it, saying yeah. it's another Wes Anderson hit. I don't know why not. That man made me cry at a MasterCard commercial, for Christ's sake. You cry at that, and you don't cry at the end of Cool Running? Something's, you're, something's <laughs> wrong with you. It's John Candy. Man. And it's Dougie Doug, man. 
It's Doug Doug. 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 Come on I, now. Here's what's weird. That dude pulls it out of you. I love Jamaica. <laughs> Dougie Doug pulls it out of me. I don't want him. I don't want Dougie Doug. You don't, you don't want him to pull it out of you. You just want, want him to leave it in. No. Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't want. I want Doug E Doug to neither put it in nor pull it out of me. I want Doug to keep it <laughs> far, far away from me. How about that? I want Dougie Doug to keep it to himself. That's what I want. It's probably the only way you'd have greatness inside you, though. <laughs> <laughs> We've, we've, we've been in the studio a lot, and I know that it's a lot because the room just got hot. I really like, by the way, this room's got an hour time limit on it because that's how long it takes to fill up a body heat. Have you noticed that, by the way? <laughs> yeah, but you think with four bodies it'd fill up so we'd only be in here like 15 minutes. Maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> well, would be a time limit. Uh, anyway, I, anybody got any closing remarks to make? I'm interested to see how this show turns out. I think it's going to be fine. We recorded an hour and six minutes. I'm going to edit it down to about 40 and then put music on it. We said interesting things 40 minutes worth. You'd be surprised. Are you counting the uh, tire change story? As yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, when that when that story was happening, like I was really glad for you. I was like, man, a shitty thing like buying tires made this dude have a good day, and that's a really great outlook. But he does have a point. It's not the best it's... story ever. But right. I do. I still feel good for you. There you go. So you, that... should. you should. You <laughs> should. <laughs> here's here's what my life. All right, is you about. got tired. Good on him. So but hold like, on, hold on. First off, uh, funny thing happened. I was at this red light. Uh, this traffic light on earlier today, it turned green. I went left. It's a true story. <laughs> Equally, not as good. <laughs> Did it make you feel awesome, though? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about going right. Honey Bun is one of these people, my, my current girlfriend. She's an apologizer. <laughs> every time. Every time. I love it. Are you not his, girl, not his about, girlfriend, not but his girlfriend, current girlfriend. girlfriend. Not to be confused with his past or future girlfriends. This bitch is current. Nobody she said anything date. about future girlfriends. That's it right. could mean future fiance. But sure, no, sure. He, he just I'm completely set you up, and you said, "Sure, sure." You're I gonna know, have to, dude. You're was, gonna have to uh, edit the fuck out of this. this or she's up. gonna be. Like, I did that to see what you were gonna do with it, and you were like, "Yeah, sure. I'll just, I'll just." Bomb. My point is, I'm not. My point is, I'm not putting <laughs> an end date on. Listen to this one. She doesn't have an expiration date. Yeah, no. You don't have to say current. You can just say my girlfriend. All right. I like my current girlfriend. I think it's. I hate it. I think there's. I think it's. I think you're. I think you're hedging your bets. She doesn't seem to mind it. It's a joke, though. Every time he says it's a joke. It's, it's good to know your girlfriend's a joke. You're an asshole. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm digging it as Shoveling far as I can it. dig down. That's all right. That's I'm, all right. I'm doing work. I've spent the past couple of weeks making fun of his wife's nose, so it's fine. It's you know, I, I like your wife's nose. I would never have looked at her and said, you know what? I could see how she'd want to get a nose job. Not saying that <laughs> Not saying that someone who did look, you know, that's not whatever. You're not I would, saying I'm an ass. I wouldn't personally say that because I don't, I'm not real big And that's why our surgery, mutual friend right. is really everyone's. Mutual That's friend. right, he's our. And, by the, and, by, and yeah, and by the way, my wife really likes having you over. Oh, well, great. She man. thinks she thinks you're a better person than you really are, but I'm okay with well, that. Well, let's keep that up then. Yeah. He comes off as better than <laughs> yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah, he does. Yeah. You you are better than, than you act. No, he, no, I'm not. He comes off better than he is. And I come off much worse than I think I am. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. I think you got screwed on this one. No, I th- that just means I have a good presentation. <laughs> You're bad, and it's just obvious. <laughs> See, uh, our holiday friend is is just. As a matter of fact, I thought for I thought at first my first suggestion for his code name today was our mutual friend and our mutual enemy. <laughs> Why is he our mutual one, enemy? He's not, but he's he can't be our mutual friend. I so. think that's a good one because you are as evil as you are. Yeah, yeah, you, you are. There's no bones about you it. You are as good as you are, but you are also as evil as you are. He's he's neutral evil. You evil. know that I mean that in, right? Yeah, you know the most. Non emotionally afflicted. I also possible. like. <laughs> I also you like when son I come, of a bitch. <laughs> I also like when I come up with a diabolical plan or just say something that's incredibly mean. You always have my back on yeah, it. Yeah, I would. Like, you're like, yeah, that's a good idea. I can see the validity in yeah. where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so we thin the population. Hmm. Interesting. It's got merits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think that if like if the four of us had to either be in sitting around a table in the hall of justice or the hall of evil, I think that you would probably be in the hall of evil. Right, but I don't you know, really like think of like it as the job. hall of evil, more of the uh, hall of practicality. Hall of practicality. There you go. See, I don't nobody think... in the hall of good is saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think I'm in the hall of good, though. I don't think I'm in the hall of justice. <laughs> no, here's the problem. They don't let you in, but on the outside, you're doing all their work. <laughs> like they're like they're like fuck. The other guy keeps submitting his his uh, admissions. They won't uh, let me in. No. 
Yeah. Meanwhile, like you were, you were actively doing the good work, right? But see, I wouldn't, I wouldn't keep submitting my stuff. I would just create my own underground kind of thing. But because it was underground and not part of the legal system, I'm kind of bad. Uh, so you're like Batman, like the cops and the bad guys are out to get you. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't have to be moral. I'm above the law. I'm definitely not a Judge Dredd <laughs> character. You'd be like, I am you'd be the like law. Punisher. Sort of vigilante. Yeah, but relevant. But, you know, yeah, but relevant, obviously. <laughs> like, so, like, so, like, if Batman and Punisher were somehow melded, they would become. I think that happened other once in a, in a crossover comic book. Yeah, it would be. I Punisher think it's not. It's, it's not. Punisher Man. <laughs> Punisher Man. I am Punisher Man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what your gadgets would be. No, yeah, nail bat. <laughs> yeah. <no>. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I oh, fuck. It's too hot in here. We're 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 shutting this down. We're leaving now. My hat has a sweat band on the inside. Because <laughs> <laughs> that hat says he has the freedom to do whatever he wants, but sweat. Hey, if you're wearing this hat, it's obviously in the summertime. You need when a sweat band. The, when there is lots of butt sweat. <laughs> yeah, it's when you we get don't have butt. We don't we don't have a camera in here, so we're gonna have to describe this. What he's wearing is a trucker hat. It's a bright. It's red, white, and blue. It's not that fucking hard to describe. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to paint a word picture, you dick. <laughs> Just take Specific, a real picture. Specifically in that order. Imagine the bill go backwards. It is literally red, white, and blue. <laughs> well, well, yes. So it's a, it's a it's a bright red bill. It's a white front, blue back. You know, and it's the the mesh. It, the mesh. Yeah, yeah, like a trucker hat. But across the across the white front in great big red letters. Freedom with a star in the O. I love it. It's my very favorite hat. <laughs> America. Fuck yeah. And I gotta go. It's hot in here. Uh, until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. I'm our mutual friend. I'll be here next holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been the podcast.